So the GDP gross domestic product has been declining in the US for the first time since the Great Recession in 2008. Now, what does this mean for our economy? Are we entering the second recession of the 21st century? Well, in this video, we will simply explain the cause of the falling GDP growth and the stagflation economy that we are currently in. So the first question we need to ask is whether we are in a recession. So the best thing to check whether we are in a recession or not is to look at GDP growth data. Now, GDP is the market value of all the finished goods and services within a country. Imagine that all the goods a country produces and the services it offers were liquidated or converted into cash. How much would it be? Well, the gross domestic product basically shows us how much money an entire country makes per year. And a recession has historically been defined by two quarters of falling or negative GDP growth, which is exactly what we have seen this year. However, President Biden and members of the Federal Reserve assured us that US economy and therefore extendably the global economy is not in a recession despite these alarming figures. So it looks like GDP has more than it meets the eye. So let's flesh out what's within what makes up GDP. Well, there are four main contributing factors to track GDP, unemployment, real personal income, real consumer spending, and industrial production. So let's unpack the first pillar, unemployment. So in a recession, we would expect to see businesses close and people lose their jobs. So we need to compare some data. In April 2020, unemployment rate rose to an all-time high of 14.7%. However, today we are seeing unemployment rate as low as 3.5%. Now, this very low unemployment rate is being used by White House officials and members of the Fed as the strongest indicator to prove that we are not in a recession. And with unemployment this low, would you say that we are in a recession? And furthermore, the unemployment rate is a lagging measure of economic activity. And it turns out that the equation used to calculate the statistic only accounts for people who are actively searching for jobs. Now, the labor force participation rate shows us that the workforce actually remains weaker than pre-pandemic levels. So simply looking at the unemployment rate itself is inconclusive. So right Right now, there is less portion of people without jobs and also less people looking for jobs. The unemployment rate might seem lower, but hidden behind it is lower labor forces participation rate. Basically, less people looking for jobs. So what about real personal income then? In a recession, we would expect household incomes to decrease. Personal income is quoted as a median average of the population, meaning that when lots of low income service sector jobs were lost during the pandemic, personal income shot up as high income jobs brought up the average. So overall, it has leveled up to be pre-pandemic levels due to the service sector's businesses opening back up. Low income jobs are coming back in. So these stats on real personal income do not show any growth or decline at this stage. However, it is crucial for us to comment on credit card debt that has been skyrocketing as prices increase. In this tweet, it says the White House would like to redefine recession as one in which consumers are not borrowing on credit cards to pay for inflation. Neither is a labor force inadequate for the size of the economy. Now, does this sound sustainable to you? So let's look at real consumer spending now. Consumer spending, which we would expect to decrease in recession, has actually been rising after the pandemic. However, these rates of spending are unsustainable and are being squeezed by rising inflation rates. The personal savings rate has dropped to a worrying 5.1%, which shows that the inflation-induced spending behaviors have depleted household savings. We will also have to see how the situation evolves as these levels of consumer spending could crash in the coming months as well. Last pillar is the industrial production and probably one of the most important pillars for GDP. Industrial production has been declining and the backlog of excess inventory has been the main indicator of the start of recession. Walmart has started a 32% increase in inventory in the first quarter. Target has had a 52% decrease in sales over the first quarter of 2022 compared with 2021. The reason for this is consumers shifting their purchases to focus more on essential goods. The amount of excess inventory across the entire industry is causing the amount of orders for manufacturers to decrease. And of course, this will subsequently decrease economic activity and the GDP. ARK Invest Kathy Wood has even said that we are in inventory-led recession as even advertisers are cutting back on budgets and retailers like Walmart and Target are cutting costs to sell off their excess inventory. Out of the four pillars of GDP, industrial production is the biggest flashing red light as it stands. And therefore, although the White House and the Fed are fighting the idea that we're in a recession, the evidence across the four indicators of GDP growth are undoubtedly leading us to a stagnating economy. 
We have seen a fall in workforce participation, industrial production and stagnation of consumer spending, and income that have contributed to two quarters of negative GDP growth. It doesn't come as a surprise to me that the ripple effect of the pandemic has finally caught up to us. So let us know in the comment section below, how has your life been impacted by the GDP? If you haven't done so, make sure you go like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video and updates on the economy.